Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from the YouTube channel Red Lessons. Thank you so much for tuning in. And in today's episode, we're gonna be taking a closer look at a fragrance by the company Scent Story. And this one is called 24 Elixir Rise of the Superb. So stay tuned. This fragrance was a three-way collaboration among perfumers Dalia Izem, Nanako Ogi, and Irina Burlakova. And a lot of you, I think, are familiar with the 24 series. It's actually named after the eponymously titled television show. And so they have the original, they have an ice variant. I've actually done one on my channel, if I'm not mistaken. If I did, I'm gonna leave a link down below. But this is actually my very first acquisition from the 24 line, or I should say from Scent Story. I don't have any other fragrance from this company. So so this is a woody spicy kind of a fragrance. It has pimento pepper as a note listed in here. There's vetiver, uh, there's geranium, which I think led one person online to say that this was a clone of vetiver geranium, uh, which I do see the similarities there, but I don't think that they're entirely alike. I do think that the Creed fragrance is a lot brighter and a lot fresher, and it kind of has that DNA that Creed fragrances are known for. And this fragrance is supposed to be a sunny fragrance, a very bright, vivacious sort of a fragrance. As a matter of fact, I read an article recently on for Grantica.com in which they were discussing this fragrance and it talked about how this is a fragrance that evokes the feeling of sun and there are a lot of other suntan lotion kind of fragrances out there not to say that this is one of them but like Dolce Gabbana light blue uh, sun uh, for men and then there's also uh, I think Fire Island by Bond number nine kind of gives off that vibe and so even on the back of the box here if I can read this for you guys it says I reached the lake at this special moment seconds before the sun rises when everything feels possible and so I I'm excited to tell you what I think of the smell, but before I do, I do want to disclose that this fragrance was sent to me by fragranceby.ca. All the links are going to be down below if you're interested. And also, they do have uh, free shipping until April 15th if you use the code RedAlescence. Let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. So the box for this fragrance has a plate on the front that says 24 Elixir. It's Eau de Parfum Strength, and it also has a podium on the inside in which the bottle rests. The bottle just has a copper feel on the front and it's black on the sides. Your information can be located on the bottom if you're looking to authenticate your purchase. The cap clicks into place very securely. You can pick this one up from the cap. The distribution on the atomizer is nice and wide. Let's continue with the smell. So as soon as this fragrance opens up, I definitely get a lot of the citrus elements. So I do get bergamot, I do get a little bit of an orangey vibe in there, and I think what it does is it sort of provides like an overall clean feel to the composition, which I think is good. I think nobody wants to smell dirty, right? So as long as you can accent that feeling of cleanliness with your fragrance, uh, that's a thumbs up for me. Once it starts to dry down, um, I suppose I get more of like the ambery nuances in the base, and initially I didn't want to shoot this video because it reminded me of a fragrance that I could not pinpoint. And I said, if I don't pinpoint exactly what fragrance this is reminding me of, I'm just not gonna shoot the video. That's how disappointed I was in myself. And then eventually I was looking through uh, my list of fragrances on Fragrantica and it occurred to me that this actually reminds me, at least in the dry down, the very dry down, it reminds me of um, a John Varvatos fragrance by the name of Platinum or their 10th anniversary edition. I, I was told they smell exactly the same. And so it kind of reminds me of that fragrance. It has like this warm, creamy, resinous dry down. I don't think this fragrance is as fresh as it's supposed to be. I don't get a whole lot of the vetiver. I don't get a whole lot of the geranium. Geranium for me, especially as it's um, kind of giving off that vibe in the Frederick Mall counterpart, it's very minty. And this fragrance is not at all minty to me. So I'm given to understand there isn't as much uh, geranium in this. And as far as vetiver as a note is concerned, I know that there are a lot of varieties of vetiver out there. Some of them have a very sort of earthy tone. Some of them, uh, like original vetiver by Creed or Mugler Cologne, they have a very fresh and clean tone. I get neither from this fragrance. What I get mostly is a sort of creamy, I would even go as far as calling it butyric. Like it almost has like a buttery nuance in the base. Like it's creamy, it's warm, it's ambery, but it also kind of keeps this transparency about it. It's weird. Like I wouldn't call this fragrance overly resinous, but I 
definitely think that the resins are there because I'm smelling something that I would equate to the smell uh, from that John Barbados fragrance that I referenced earlier. And so they're inevitably there, but they're not as dense as I would imagine them to be. So it's a bit of a, it's a bit of an anomaly, if you will. It has its idiosyncrasies there. So overall, I think this is a pleasant smelling scent. I don't think anybody will say to you that you smell bad when you're wearing this. I definitely think this is a pleasant scent. It's certainly an interesting composition. I do find there to be a level of uniqueness, uh, definitely put together by three perfumers that I've never heard of before. And so that's going to encourage me to do a little bit more of my research on my end. So I'm thankful for that. But overall, I think this is a scent that gives off a very clean vibe. I think it has a bit of a warmth in the base. It has a sort of creamy, buttery quality about it, but not something that I would equate to like Quilombo by Fueguia. I know that's an obscure frame of reference and I do apologize for that. But that one is so buttery it kind of smells like popcorn. It almost like became a novelty scent for me. It is a novelty scent. And then there's another one, La Fin du Monde by Tatli Berdurange, which also has a buttered popcorn note. Weird. Uh, but this one, on the other hand, I do think it has a pleasant vibe about it. But in full disclosure, um, I like pretty much every other uh, 24 gold fragrance that I've tried. So every other fragrance that I've tried from this company, um, I've liked more than this one. So that's just me trying to keep it as transparent as possible with you guys. And I should also note that Fragrance by .ca does carry other fragrances from this line. And so if you are interested in checking them out, you can use code, uh, use the code RETALESCENCE uh, for free shipping on any order over $55. And just to also keep it transparent with you guys, I am not making any money off of that code. I'm not making commission uh, off of that code. It's just a code that I set up with uh, a gentleman from that company to give you guys a good deal if you're looking to purchase from that website. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I would say this fragrance is unique. I mean, it really only reminded me of one other fragrance, which was a very obscure fragrance that I don't even think is still purchasable, uh, at least not in Macy's, you can find it online. Uh, but even then, this is a lighter, sunnier, fresher variant of it. In terms of longevity, I got about five to six hours. So given the concentration. It's a little below average, um, but it's definitely one that you can reapply throughout the day. It's not incredibly expensive or anything like that. In terms of projection, this one projected for about two hours, and then it started to sit a little bit closer to the skin, becoming an intimate skin scent, and it didn't fully disappear, like I said, until like the five or six hour mark, so somewhere in that range. In terms of versatility, I think this one is incredibly versatile, whether you're a man or a woman, no matter what occasion you wanna wear this to, I just wouldn't wear this in the colder weather. So don't wear this in the dead of winter. I don't think that the performance will withhold uh, the harshness of the cold seasons. And then also in terms of the presentation, I think the presentation for this one looks really, really nice. Really nice attention with the box here. So my final verdict on this one is if you're on the market for a fragrance that smells fresh, has a little bit of a warm, creamy, ambery backbone, but also a fragrance that's kind of ethereal and transparent and not something that's going to sit too heavy on your skin, you might be interested in checking this one out. However, if you are a fan of the original 24 Gold, which is a very heavy amber, this one is diametrically opposed to that. So if you're a fan of something a little heavier, something that has that Middle Eastern vibe about it with the really heavy richness of the amber, definitely check out the original. But all in all, I wanna thank you all so much for tuning in. That was my review of 24 Elixir Rise of the Superb by Scent Story. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe for future videos, and that includes fragrance reviews just like this one, top tens, giveaways, unboxings, and a lot of other fragrance-related content. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.